1 Peter chapter number 5, verse number 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. I want to preach on a very simple thought this morning, avoiding Satan's snares. Avoiding Satan's snares. Now, I don't know if it bothers you to see the shape that our country's in, but it should. And I believe it does. It, it, it should bother all of us. I mean, there was a day when folks lived to go to church. And uh, a lot of snares have been set up by Satan. And a lot of folks have fallen into those things. What a joy to see all these young people up here this morning uh, singing for the glory of God. But I can tell you right now, that don't make the devil happy. In fact, he's going to lay some traps. And he's going to try to catch them up and trap them and see them mess up their life. Not only young people, but old people. I had a preacher preach in my church and and uh, during his message he mentioned uh, that he had been uh, canceling a couple. He said that they were uh, uh, celebrating their 50th anniversary and he said they're almost ready to divorce. He later told me when we went out to eat he said, I mentioned about that couple I was uh, canceling. I said, yes, sir. He said, that was my mother and dad. My, my, we're in a mess, amen? But we've got a great God. I tell my church a lot, you know, we are a needy people, and we are. We're a needy people. But, thank God, we got a great big God. Amen. There's nothing that you can have a need for that God cannot take care of. I'm glad this morning you'll never ask Him for more than He is capable of doing. Amen. And so, uh, Peter here begins to uh, say, that, uh, you know, that, de that the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Who better than Peter to know that? Peter had his problems, didn't he? I mean, he's just human like you and I, and uh, he done some things that, uh, but God loved him, amen, and God used him. I know there'd be a lot that would throw him away and say, well, he'd never be worth anything. and We can't use him. He messed up, but God used him. Amen. You can't deny that, can you? Amen. So uh, today we realize that uh, the Lord is our help. During these times of uh, Satan walking about trying to uh, deceive and destroy and to tear down. Hey, God is our help. In Job 1 7, the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Amen. Hey, the devil is on the prowl today. He's on the loose. Amen. He's trying his best to mess up everyone that he can. Had a young man come to our church and and he got saved, and he'd been coming a month or two, and he said, uh, I want to ask you a question. I said, what's that? He said, how long you get saved? After you get saved, the devil will leave you alone. 
I laughed and I said, son, I ain't tell you this, but he never will. Amen. As long as you're in this flesh, amen, the devil is going to aggravate you. He's going to give you a hard time. He's going to do everything that he can uh, to hinder you and to mess you up because he knows that's all he can do. He can't do anything with your soul. Hey man, you done give that to God. It belongs to Him. So He can't touch that. Uh, but He will. I try His best. I to steal your testimony. Hey man. I want us to notice about four things here this morning about uh, avoiding Satan's snares. First of all, let me say, don't stray. There's a lot of folks that are straying from the truth. I like your sign. Only 1611 KJV used in preaching and teaching. I'm hearing today, amen, I'm hearing that there's a lot of uh, so-called fundamental uh, Baptist churches and preachers uh, that are being moved from that. I'm going to tell you, I, I, I guess I would qu uh, classify as an older preacher now, and I've been preaching for 50 years, uh, but thanks be unto God, I like I am my grave. I believe in that King James Bible. Amen. Amen. There's some things that we ought to be settled and founded and not moved about on this morning. I don't care who changes. I don't care if it's mama, daddy, uncle, or whoever. We ought to be settled on that King James Bible. Amen. And so don't uh, stray. A lot of fo folks have neglected prayer in their Christian life. You know what that does? Lack of prayer leads to straying. One thing leads to another. Is that not right? It's a progression. People get uh, lacking in prayer life. And so then they get to missing church. You see it. A lot of times you see it. And it becomes a pattern. And and until they recognize that, and uh, straight, that's the reason why we have revival. Amen. It's to stir us up. Thank God uh, for a move of God here this morning. I, I feel revived this morning uh, because of His presence. Amen. And so a lot of times, just that lack of praying. Another thing that'll cause you to stray is friends. Friends. An older preacher, he's gone to glory now. Brother Wayne Henderson. I don't know if anybody here even knows him or ever knew him. Brother Wayne Henderson, he was a dear friend of ours. And uh, he told me, Years ago, when I was just a young uh, pastor, pastor in my first church, he said, when you're making friends, he said, get you some friends that are closer to God than you are. He said, they'll always be lifting you up, pulling you up. He said, if you make friends, that are not as close to God as you are. They're always going to be dragging you down and pulling you down. Young people, Lamentations 2, uh, 27, I believe it is, said it's good that a man bear the yoke in his youth. Thank God uh, for some young people uh, that's not ashamed to lift their hand and praise to God. I uh, make you some friends uh, that has God in their life. Amen. A lot of times people want parents want their children to have these uh, sports and and uh, athletes as their uh, role model. They'll put their pictures in their bedrooms and stuff. A lot of them don't even know God. They care nothing about God. 
Amen. Find you somebody in the house of God, an old Christian saint of God uh, that has God in their heart and in their life. And you want somebody to be a role model. Uh, let them be a role model to you uh, because they know how to get a hold of God. I started pastoring when I was 25 years old. There's an old couple that lived out from our church about three miles back out in the mountain. They would walk to church. They never owned the car. They'd walk across the hill, follow a path down through there, come out on a gravel road, an old mud, muddy gravel road. They'd wear them rubber galoshes to church slip them off out in the foyer and come in the house of God. I'm going to tell you something. They knew God. They knew how to get a hold of God. I'd get ready to go off to revival, Brother Doug, and I'd tell my wife, I said, let's go by and see Sister Fanny and Brother Troy. I said, I need you folks to pray for me this week. I'll be preaching revival. I knew they knew how how to get a hold of God. She was dying with cancer. They'd moved her to town. Put her in the back room back there, just a little old room, wasn't much bigger than a closet. It's dark and like a dungeon. We'd go in there on Sunday afternoon to visit her. I'd tell my wife, I said, let's go by and visit Sister Fanny. See if we can be a blessing and a help to her. She wasn't the one that got blessed. I was. I'd go in there and I'd say, Sister Fanny, how you doing today? She'd say, oh, preacher, God's been so good to me. Her laying back there dying, uh, you know, fixing to leave this world. She'd say, God's been good to me. I'm telling you, God's been good to us. I don't stray, don't get away from God. I stay with the stuff this morning. Amen. Thank God. Be careful about your friends. Amen. And then here's another thing that'll help you not to fall into Satan's snares. Don't strut. We get to thinking we've made it. We've arrived. Oh, we're, you know, look down that bony nose. We're better than them. Don't forget that gutter God got you out of. That mess of sin you was in. The only difference between me and that wino that laid out there in the alley last night or laid under a bridge somewhere is the grace of God. A God came by to where I was at, picked me up out of that mess that I was in. I saved my ungodly soul. Had it not been for the hand of God, and that could have been me this morning. Amen. Don't strut. I can't even see my words. Amen. Thank God. Proverbs 16, 18, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Amen. In other words, just stay humble. Amen. I'd rather have tears any day, wouldn't you? than to get to a feeling like you uh, somebody that you know how to do it. That's what's wrong uh, with most folks now. They think, oh, don't uh, just leave me alone. I'll be all right. I can handle it. I know you can't handle it. Amen. We proved that before we got saved. That's the reason why our lives was in such a mess. Amen. What about this verse, John twelve forty three? For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Thank God for a Savior that loves us, Brother Jerry, that went to Calvary, paid our sin debt. He paid a debt that he didn't even owe. Amen. He didn't have no sin, but he took upon himself our sin, thank God, and bore it to Calvary and paid our sin debt. 
Amen. Let me give you another one here. We'll move right along. Don't stoop. Amen. That's the way you start slipping in to Satan's snares. Is you start degrading, stepping down the Word of God. Amen. God's Word is truth. It'll stand when this world's on fire. Romans 12, 21, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Hey, you think about the morals of our society. Amen. I remember in 1973, when I graduated high school, a people that wasn't even saved, a kids that I went to high school with, a that wasn't even in church, had better standards than most folk today that go to church every week. God, help us. He's a holy God. God done anything for you. Has he blessed you? Has he been good to you? Has he answered any of your prayers? Hey Amen. I see these kids up here. I, I dare say there's some mamas and daddies that's rejoicing how that God has answered how their prayers and saved their children. I thank God. I'm glad. I pour a God this morning how that we can turn to. We got two daughters. God blessed us with two lovely daughters. They're beautiful. They look just like me. <laughs> Three wonderful grandchildren. God's been good to us. My wife and I, next month, celebrate 47 years of marriage. God's been good to us. I'd like to say it's me, but I can't. It's been all about Him. It's not about me. It's not about her. It's always been about Him. Boy, He's a good God this morning. Thank God we've had a good life. We've had a... There's a lady in my church she'll stand up when we're having testimony she'll say I just want to thank God for my good life I've heard her say it so many times her uh, mother when she was living she died when she's up in her 90's her mother used to stand and she'd say I just want to tell him I love him amen amen you know what we need in America this morning? Some folks that's in love with God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That'll just keep on loving God. No matter what's going on, no matter who's in the White House, no matter what kind of uh, COVID that we're having or anything, uh, hey, just keep on loving God uh, because He has always delivered. Amen. He's always protected what, he, what belongs to Him. Millions have relaxed their standards. God don't mean anything. Amen. We're raising a generation that feels like it's, well, just whatever you want to do about God, that'll be okay. It won't be okay. My brother and I was raised, took to church, I mean, they made us go every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Neighbors that lived right beside of us, they had a boy my same age. She told, I, I asked uh, him about going to church with us. She said, no, said, I want him to make his own decision about church. He did. He pulled up from my house. And I went up there to his car. He had one of them brown bags and a bottle sticking up out of He made his choice. Amen. She'd have been a whole lot better off if she'd have made a choice for him a whole lot sooner because he made his choice. He was out of church for a number of years, drank, quit school, tried to join the army and they wouldn't take him, all kinds of things. 
And they moved to Kingsport. And then I moved to Kingsport. Me and my wife, we was married, moved over to Kingsport. I'd see him over in the grocery store. And I'd ask him, I said, Davy, did you ever get in church? No, no, I don't go. One night, one Sunday night, I saw him way down the aisle. Here he come. Big old smile on his face. He said, guess what happened? I said, you got saved, didn't you? He said, I sure did. Amen. I'm so glad he did. He died at 40 years old with a heart attack. His daddy was a lost man. Be all right if I just mind God a minute. We was having tent revival. Told my dad, I don't know why this come to my mind, but I jumped this rabbit, I might as well chase it. We was fixing to have a tent revival. Told my dad, I said, I want to set that tent. He said, where are you going to put it? I said, oh, where on Mr. Hawkins is laying? He said, son, he ain't going to let you put that tent over there. I said, well, that's where God said to put it. I said, let's me and you pray about that for a while. Now, this is what God do. Thank God for his brother Sammy. I never saw him before. Amen. So about two months later, I was over at my dad's one Sunday afternoon. I said, I'll be back in a few minutes. I'm going over here to talk to Mr. Hawkins. He said, okay. I went to school with his boy. That's that same, same boy that died 40 years old. I went over there and I said, uh, Charles, I got something I want to ask you. He said, what's that? I said, uh, you grew up in this community. How long has it been since you've seen a tent revival? He studied. He said, boy, it's been a long time. I said, I remember when they used to have them. I said, well, I was thinking about having one. He said, that'd be good. That'd be good. That'd be real good. He said, what do you think about having it? <laughs> I said, over on your property. <laughs> Said, that'd be all right. Amen. Said, that'd be all right. Said, I, I'll go over and bush all get off, clean it off real good. Said, there's a power pole out there where there used to be a sign plugged up. Said, you can plug up right there, and we got that little restaurant. We'll close every night before the meeting starts, and y'all can use the bathroom. Just lock them up when you leave. I'm talking about what God does. <laughs> He never come to the meeting. I invited him several times, but he never come. But he'd come over there and check on things. And while I was preaching, I'd see him sitting out there on the picnic table, listening. God got to dealing with that heart. Just a few weeks after that meeting closed, he got born again. Saved by the grace of God. Let me tell you a little more about that meeting. We sat in that tent. Daddy, you know how daddies are. They're just looking after their kids. My dad come over to help me and he said, Son, you realize where you set this tent? I said, Yeah. I said, This is where Mr. Hawkins said set it. He said, Look right there. We wasn't more than 30 feet from a man that had killed a man in that community. He said, they're, they're not going to let you have that meeting here. I said, well, God said I have it. I'm going to set the tent. We'll see what happens. And so I told there's an older preacher there in the meeting with us. preaching. I'd preach one night, he'd preach one night. And I said, I want you to pray. We're going to go over and visit that man and talk to him about his lost condition. I went to school with his son. Him and his son chased a man through that community, that small community, shot him in the back of the head with a 30-30 deer rifle. A few nights went by. I said, let's go over and talk to him. He was up in years. He came to the door. He knew who I was. I 
told him what we was doing. We was having that meeting. Well, his wife came first. She said, y'all having that tent revival? You the one preaching that? I said, yeah. She said, well, J.D., my, that boy I went to school with, said he had a little calf out here in the garage. He said, I told him, said, you're going to have to take that calf over to your house. They're going to have tent revival. That's just God. That may not mean much to you, but that's God. That's what God does. He come out there and he was on a walker. We began to talk to him and tell him about the love of God. Hey, you don't have to take a back seat to the devil. He don't owe you nothing. Live for God. Take a stand for God. Amen. He's still seated on the throne this morning. Everything's all right in my father's house today. He looked at me, the coldest eyes you ever saw. He said, son, do you realize it's been over 20 years since anybody in this community stepped on my property? I said, yes, sir, I realize that. But I wanted to tell you about a God that loves you. We began to talk to him. Asked him if we could have prayer. And I saw them tears when they started rolling out of his che- corners of his eyes. And trembling, his wife had brought him a chair out there and he sat down on the sidewalk and right there in that chair, he found God dear to his heart. I thank God I'm glad he didn't die lost without God. Which brings me to my last point. Don't stop. Don't stop. Too many have said, oh, I don't know if it's worth it. Sure it's worth it. Sometimes the days may look long and they may look dark, but I can tell you through it all, God's been good. Mark 10, 22, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. He that endureth to the end shall be saved. Sometimes it gets tough. Amen. But he's worth it. He walked to Calvary while they spit on him and mocked him and laughed at him. You say, well, I've had a hard time. You ain't had that hard of a time. We've suffered very little in comparison to what our Savior suffered. Amen. Don't ever stop living for God. Amen. Don't ever stop loving Him. He'll never stop loving you. Keep living for the Lord in closing Romans 8 37 said nay and all these things were more than conquerors through him that loved us for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Boy, I sure do love Him. Amen. I want my life to count for Him. They'll never read my name in the headlines. Most people will never know much about me. But i tell you one thing. I'm glad he knows me. I'm glad that I'm his child this morning. And he's my father. Amen. Avoiding Satan's snares. Stay with God. He'll never regret it. I've heard folks time and time again through the years say, boy, I regret. I've done so-and-so. I regret. 
I had to go to jail. I regret I've done this. I regret I... But I've never heard anybody say I regret that I chose to live for God. God is so good. Amen. Be all right if we give an invitation. Let's stand. With heads bowed. Christians praying. You may come, some are coming. You may want to just come and say, God, I just want to be determined that I don't ever cross you up, that I don't ever stray from you, I don't ever quit serving you. There may be somebody here this morning, maybe the devil's been trying to cheat you and trying to get you to turn aside. Friend, if you are, I'd slip down here right now and get in this altar and say, God, I want to be more determined to stay with you. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.